Hello everybody, hope you're having a good day. Today I have a special guest with me, Mr. Marko Milicevic, very known as Gramofonzi. So, how are you doing, Marko? Hi, hello. Uh, I'm all good, all good. Good morning to you, a good day to everyone. Good morning, good morning and good day. <laughs> So yes, we are here to talk about music and uh, lifestyle and your um, really your 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 pathway and um, what uh, you know what what you achieved with your music and everything. And uh, I'm I'm definitely a fan of your sound. So um, yes, I'm very happy that you are here in the well in in your studio in my studio. Yeah, man, th thanks for all the flattery, man. I'm I'm the huge fan of yours. So yeah, <laughs> just to say that too. Elf, I'm sorry for for. Uh, I, I think my English is, so is, is becoming is becoming a little bit rusty uh, because of the whole situation. Because I'm like you know just mm. sitting at home in studio and like you know with the family, so for not sure. much English talking. But sure. uh, yeah, this is this is nice opportunity to uh, yeah great to get out great. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 I have a have a little bit of a music talk because you know as much as we love making music as as music producers musicians you know we like talking about it as well. Yeah, yeah of so, course. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a very important part of uh, you know being a producer musician I think. Um, so the, I kind of wanted to start with the with again with the cliche like how did you get into music and um, how how did it all start for you? How it all started? Well, uh, man, I, I, you know, it, it is. It's, it, it's a cliche. It's like I was always involved in music, yeah. <laughs> and I and I and I really was. I suppose everyone who's like whole life in music, are like you know, whole life in music. So, uh, but I was like really little. Uh, I got into um, well, my family was like they were all uh, you know listening to good music, and they were all uh, not professional musicians, but everyone in my family. Uh, did at least some elementary school uh, in piano, violin, cello, whatever. So uh, I was, you know, uh, well, I think I was like seven or eight or something. I started like playing cello, mm -hmm. and I finished uh, primary music school playing cello. And then uh, when I was supposed to go uh, for like. Uh, secondary school is secondary yeah for cello uh, then I got involved into in, into electronic music and it happened pretty interesting because uh, I was uh, every every year I was like during summer I was uh, going to England to uh, learn English mm. and you know you go to some like um, for two or three weeks uh, you uh, you go to some family and then from, you know, you stay with them, with English family, and then you go to school and after school you have like a few hours free. And uh, I was just like, it happened, I think it was like 1993 or something or right. four, or three years, something like that. So uh, that, that year it happened to me that, that I was, uh, that my school was in, in, in London. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, after school, I was just like, you know, wandering around London and I stumbled uh, Soho was really interesting to me, so I was like, you know, checking out the stores, and I remember uh, I got in some military store, like with, uh, you know, th at that moment uh, we were like pretty much into like <laughs> military stuff. <laughs> so I I got into into the store, and in the underground of the store, I, I heard some like music that I never heard before, mm. and it was like guys were like playing dub and jungle. Oh, cool! And, and, yeah, cool. and the moment I got there and I saw like the turntables and like you know the whole thing, I was just like, "What is going on here?" Like, wow! Yeah, and that was the that was the moment when it just all clicked, and I was just like, "Okay." So that, that that's why that's that's when it started like with DJing and everything that I want to go where, where, where I got interested in DJing, and then I was like, you know. Just DJing, 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 DJing. So yeah, I, I, I first started as a jungle DJ, oh, but really? then yeah, yeah, yeah I oh, was wow. like really into jungle. But uh, being raised in Belgrade, like there was at that moment there was no one. F first of all, I was you know like uh, underage to 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 get anywhere, mm -hmm. and I so I couldn't you know uh, I, I I couldn't get involved with the scene or with anybody else at that moment in Belgrade, so I didn't know the people. Mm -hmm. 
So for like two, three years, I was like really into jungle. And then uh, uh, by growing up, I started like, you know, uh, uh, meeting other people from the scene, from Belgrade scene. And everyone at that moment were like pretty much into house music. Yeah. And then I also discovered the French filtered house. Oh. And I got hooked on that so much. Not that much on Daft Punk. I was more like uh, hooked on... Uh, the other like F communication uh, uh, um, label and from Fcom there were like few few like Cassius and uh, yes. Bomb Base and all all that, all that kind of a, yeah all that stuff that that kind of a filtered house Isn't and actually, then of course actually in the nineties filtered house was 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 I think is was, was more popular than today there was a the, a lot of these like disco chops coming out and yeah you know, yeah, yeah, were, it, it yeah, was, yeah it was it was it was like there was like a wave of of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember I still I still have like a, a you know selection of records of, of of that sound and and today that that stuff still works because it's kind of stems from disco right and yeah, it's, yeah. It, yeah. and it's uh, and it's I, know, I disco feel is like, like more eter it's like eternal style disco really it, it is but yeah of course but I think like last few years like. Uh, uh, regarding house, I see you know like recycling old, not disc records but like house records, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it's there's the, the, the some nice nice uh, still you know when I play when I when I used to play <laughs> last year, uh, I always have like these records that I realized they're like now 25 years old and they still work as you say like, and when I play them I have like two or three young people like what is this what is this what did you play yeah so yeah some some builder house especially from from the guys like uh cassius or uh from from that clique of people uh they're they're like definitely timeless and they like really good job <laughs> so uh yeah after djing uh what, what happened with me like with, with my uh musical journey uh in 2000, I enrolled for Red Bull Music Academy, which was held in Dublin. Okay. And I, and I think that was like uh, the first international Red Bull Music Academy. And uh, for some reason, I, I managed to, to, to get there. And uh, I went there for two weeks. And there I met like a bunch of people. And that really changed my life, mm -hmm. I have to say. Uh, first of all, because I was... Uh, I was never like growing up in Belgrade. I was never in any uh, contact with any production, any electronic music production, because there were no people in in Serbia. There were like only only two guys that I knew, Noise Destruction, who were like from from Novi Sad, and they were like much older. Yeah, than Fakir and Fakir and Z, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were my, they, uh, uh, you know, I. To, to be honest, when I was like little, I wanted to be like them, and uh, but I never understand it, how that all works. And because they were like much older than me, and they were like living in another city, at that moment I didn't have a car or whatever, so uh, I couldn't uh, get, you know, I didn't know how the music was being, I knew how the music was being produced, but I never had any contact, direct contact with it. So. What happened uh, at the Red Bull Music Academy is like they had like beautiful room which was which was called equipment room, yeah, right. and you could go, go there and you can you know like check out all the rhythm machines like 808s or 909s or 303s or uh, all, all the all the other gear. And uh, the best thing, the best thing was like I don't know I remember Derek Carter being there, wow. and uh, yeah he was like oh I'll show you, and I was like. Fuck yeah. Hello there. And also hi Derek. So also so also yeah, he showed me and I was like totally like I was like you know, I was blown away and also I uh, at that moment uh, I, I mean now it's 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 kind of embarrassing to say that, but at that moment I didn't know I I met Roger Lynn. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, and yeah, legend and also and then I realized how is he making music? Uh, how he not making how, how he made the machines and everything mm -hmm. and also uh, I, there was a lecture with Bob Moog I didn't uh, know who Bob Moog was and then after that I was like you know all the dots you know little Marco and like growing Marco was like you know getting the dots oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course and I was like wow so you know being uh, uh, being able to 
uh, to experience all that, I was like, okay. Right. So this is how you do it. Okay. And, you know, let's go. <laughs> all right. So, cool. yeah, that's the story. And, and everything else is, you know, everything uh. else. Like me trying to, <clears throat> 10 years, trying to make music and to save some money to buy some equipment, some rhythm machines. And uh, living in Serbia, I was like, pretty hard to do that mm. because like salaries were like, I don't know, like five Deutsche Marks and a, a decent rhythm machine was like at least thousand. Yeah. So if you, if you, if you weren't dealing or doing uh, something bad, <laughs> you couldn't afford it. So, um, I got to hook up with, uh, uh, here are like, um, people who, who used to have, who, who have studios mm. and, uh, who were doing like dance music like uh dance music like uh euro dance music you know yeah, yeah. and uh some of them and also some people doing uh, uh doing folk music here in serbia because they had money they had nice studios so i i got myself into one of these and um, i was like working there and killing my ears but, yeah. <laughs> but at least, you, but uh, at least you, you could have used the gear that was the exactly yeah. exactly and there also I learned like a bunch of stuff about recording and about editing and uh, I kind of uh, unfortunately I didn't uh, unfortunately for me I didn't uh, catch the time uh, of uh, you know recording to to uh, tapes but I catch the time like recording to ADATs and and uh, this that I, I would say like the first the second wave of the digital age. And then when everything, you know, when, when programs started, uh, actually when I started like using programs like Cubase and Rando, mm -hmm. and at that time that was like, you know, 20, 20 years ago, yeah, you didn't even have uh, crack programs, you know, like you didn't have like, uh, you only had like original ones, mm -hmm. which is like, yeah, normal to, uh, you, you didn't uh, have what kids have today, like you didn't have yeah, files, you didn't have anything. Yeah. So, but I was lucky enough to be in a studio and the only way to get it, uh, you know, was to buy it. And these guys, they had money, so they, they were having, you know, all the, all the latest versions. So that's where I, uh, and everyone was working in Cubase. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's why I learned Cubase yeah. first. And then we, they, when they switch to Pro Tools, I, I learn Pro Tools. Yeah. But but really, once you know one software, it's just you know it's yeah, it, it, because but you know what what really gets me is people say, oh, I need to learn Ableton, I need to learn Cubase, I need to learn this, and it's like they're, they're thinking they they're, they're learning the software, but actually they're learning a lot more, you know, about music production and about you know recording principles and you know exactly. audio, audio rates and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it's you know once once you know one, you can kind of shift to it. yeah. When you know one, when you know the principles, when you know the fundamentals, then you, it's just learning shortcuts. You know, you're just learning shortcuts to other. You know, just to get the workflow. Everything else is the same. You know, compressor is the same everywhere. EQ is same everywhere. Delay is same everywhere. Yeah, sure. Even if you're using hardware, it's the same thing. Yeah. So. Uh, so yeah, that's my journey. And then uh, when uh, I managed to get myself uh, a copy of uh, Nuendo, mm -hmm. I think it was like 2003 or 2004, something like that. I started like, uh, I managed to, you know, uh, actually the, the, the story goes that uh, there's like a popular band in Serbia called Belgrade Syndicate, Belgrade Syndicate. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, we are in the same neighborhood, so uh, also my best man is a part, now my best man, that, that, that my friend was a part, uh, and is a part of the of the, of the company. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we build there like doing hip hop. Okay, cool. Serbian hip hop. So uh, we, we made a studio together. So that's when I started like doing it like, uh, how to say, like, 24 hours music and making beats and that's when I would say my music started like to 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 grow because I was able to record edit and mix oh, of course. Uh, everything and that's when I started like uh, making music and first yeah of course I was like making a lot of hip-hop from there a lot of beats for them and uh, for some other groups here local and also I was doing some other stuff like commercials and and my primary living was like from DJing. I was like DJing okay. a lot in Serbia, and I was like 
I became in 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 this like ten twelve fifteen years. I became like well known DJ in 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 my region. Yeah, of course. So I never I was never into production that much. Uh, actually, uh, the, everything that happened to me in the production happened when I wanted to to switch off from from DJing because yeah. I think in two thousand and eight or something I was doing uh, a lot of. Um, uh, films, a lot of uh, uh, series for TV, a lot of commercials. So, so I was like switching to that, like okay. you know, doing sound design and doing mixing and doing production. And uh, I, uh, I realized also that I was like DJing at that time already for like, I don't know, mm. fifteen years or more. And I mean, like fifteen years uh, uh, as a professional, professionally. Mm. And then I realized. Um, Okay, I wanna you know I did everything that I can do in DJing and you know it's becoming a little bit did uh, yeah, yeah 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 so uh, then I just like realized okay I just gonna do like two parties a month and I'm just gonna do start doing like my music and just play my music hmm. and that's when everything else kicked and again like internationally I did the, the one one song changes all. Yeah, this so. is this is this is exactly what I wanted to what I wanted to talk about is how that uh, hit of yours changed your life because because it, it must have must have changed your you know lots of things. It, it changed it changed everything like upside down like in uh, literally in like two months mm. because the thing was I did a I did a, a I did a track. I mean, like I was, I was really keen to to Chicago house and especially uh, um, style called Jacking House. Mm. And uh, Jacking House, like you know, a lot of snippets of. Well, I was always into jazz, so it was always like funk or jazz. So I was like more into jazz. So you, you know, just it, it's sampling, mm. and uh, uh, we all know it's illegal. Yeah. So. But but when you're doing when you're just releasing vinyl and at that moment vinyl like went totally down and uh, actually yeah the reason why I started producing so much music mm -hmm. is because in 2008 seven eight nine it happened that uh, music that I that I was after that I wanted to play uh, records vinyl stopped you know just stopped mm -hmm. everybody stopped using vinyl and uh, everybody shifted more to to digital and was it, was people it, was, that, was it like 2006 7 8 something like that six seven eight nine something like that something like yeah. that yeah yeah so uh slowly but in one moment i remember like 2008 when i go to like beatport to mm. buy music it was all minimal everyone was like into minimal yeah. And you could only buy minimal, minimal. <laughs> and there was no there was no music that I could you know. And I was like, so okay, what, what do you think that is? Uh, well, it's uh, you know uh, that it, was it, actually. It, well, people were just into you know they just discovered you know music is like everything else. It's repeating, and uh, they're like trends. You know, like now the trend is I don't know tech house with vocals, mm. and. Sorry, with more vocals now because we are sitting at home, so people can't listen to like one loop ten minutes yeah. because they're not in the club. So they want some vocals. So now the trend is vocals, and I'm sure like the moment everything goes back to 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 uh, to the partying, and to normal, to partying, you know, people still gonna enjoy well, like gonna go you know and really hard. good techno <laughs> techno loop. Yeah, that's 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 a very good prediction actually, and I yeah. think that's that's what's gonna happen too. Yeah, I agree. Sure. Yes. So, so yeah, I just think, you know, at that moment, it just happened that uh, there was a gap in music that I didn't have. So I started producing my music and I was just like, okay, I want to play this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and literally my friends and, and uh, I always say my, my, uh, my wife, mm -hmm. she was like, hey, uh, for, for the track that I did that became big. She was like, hey, make me this one. I want to listen to this one in a club. So that's why I made it. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. Great. And also the other thing was like, I already did another track, which was called Street Lady. And it was supposed to be released uh, on Guest House Music. And my friend Jason, DJ Mess, he told me like, hey, we need a B-side for this one because, you know, the, the, the track that I sent him, he, he wanted to press vinyl. So he was like, you know, I need something better than the one that you sent me. 
So I sat down, I made this one, I played it, and it, uh, you know, it, it on, on the first play, it went really good. Like, you know, first time I played in a club, I got like five people asking, what is this? Mm-hmm. So, uh, which was a pretty good prediction. Mm-hmm. So uh, I sent it, so it was a B-side, actually, for the for the guest, guest house music, and the EP was called Swinging with the Fishes, because both, both tracks were like, first one was sampling uh, Donald Byrd, mm-hmm. Uh, and street lady and uh, uh, and the second one was like yeah why don't you do right from Peggy Lee and uh, Benny Good and, and yeah yeah I, I actually I actually wanted to ask you uh, how, how did it go with with the with, with sample clearance and, and and stuff like that because obviously obviously that, story. obviously story. obviously <laughs> there is a story behind it I, I, yeah, there, yeah. it must be because because I'm sure I'm sure I used to work I used to work for for, for, for publishing house uh, this was in uh, uh, 2005, six something like that. I used to work for De Wolf Publishing in London, and I remember when uh, we would get an inquiry for for somebody. For for for, for example, uh, we had um, one of those Basement Jacks track, uh-huh. uh, jo- Corina Joseph, "Live Your Life." With uh-huh. me. Yeah, yeah, that's that's actually De Wolf sample, and mm-hmm. uh, I was I was helping them out. To, to, to clear, to clear it. it yeah when, when when the record came out came out but I know that people in accounting uh, not, not 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 so much you know the owners but people in accounting they were like oh there is a sampling inquiry you know somebody wants to you know use the sample let's see how much money we can make you know? yeah, yeah everyone was <laughs> like that so yeah the story goes like um, uh, I mean, like yeah, the, what I was saying, like Jackie House was, you know, it's it's really, 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 really small scene. So it's maybe worldwide, worldwide at the moment, it it, it was maybe thousand people max. Mm. So we had like our little niche, and if you sample something because uh, it's, it, you know, when it's on vinyl, it's like three hundred copies. No one is going to chase you for that, you know. So. It was kind of a bootleg thing, you know. That's so. Even if you release it online, you know, if you sell like 150 copies, you're like the king of yeah. the <laughs> of the scene. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, what happened with this track is like when I release it, uh, like first like month or two months. Actually, nothing happened, you know, like people liked it, Right. people were like playing it and everything. Right. And uh, when things started to took off, it's like when uh, Dennis Ferrer, he, he, oh, yeah. he charted it on Beatport as his number one. Oh, wow. And he was like playing it everywhere. And then Miami Winter Conference happened, I think it was like 2009. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were there and I literally remember like going down the South Beach and from every I mean like I'm not like like from literally every joint that you can hear was like this 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 track playing and I was like you know like fuck what we're gonna do so (laughs) because it's going to it's gonna blow and uh, what actually happened like in after the 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 man winter conference uh, we got like so much inquiries like from all the major labels and we were like okay uh, if we want to proceed with this we need to uh, replay the sample yeah of course and uh, so we started like replaying the sample and uh, we got like few offers yeah uh, and it was there were like pretty good offers I gotta say yeah. uh, but what happened is there's a guy uh, uh, we got recom- we, we got the uh, recommendation for some guy i think he's in, in from, he's from uk but he lives in in spain or something mm-hmm. scorcho music or something uh, guys from uh, shapeshifters they replayed lola steam there i think eric pritz okay. replayed so uh, he was like uh, you know well known guy so we sent the, the track to him and uh, we were like it took him like 2 months or something and we, we were already in the summer, like that's to 2009, so it was like July, August or something, and literally everyone, like at that moment, track like exploded totally, mm-hmm. and we already started to have like some legal problems, um, because, you know, it was, it was becoming really big, and we were just like, you know, tell, yeah, just like, you know, one week, two weeks, we were waiting for the replay, so I can do the, you know, 
reproduction of everything and to to to, to clear it. And because yeah, on the other side, we already uh, the GMS already managed to to clear the sample with the uh, to get the, the permission from uh, the. Uh, uh, right theaters so, or yeah. well holding holding uh, from the owners from the owners yeah. yeah so we just needed to do the masters and that's it okay and uh, but I, I I will never remember I will never forget that uh, I was like already yeah and everything that happened to me when I say upside down like mm. everything literally happened to me like from uh, I always joke like from uh, going, uh, you know, from walking to my gig in a in a in a cafe, you know, mm. so like flying a jet, uh, private jet, like it was like two months. Yeah, brilliant. like <laughs> two months brilliant. from like you know, uh, biggest festival. I don't know, like playing Creamfields, mm. you know, from playing home to playing Creamfields was like two months. Wow. And it was like totally r- rocket, sh- you know. Like I was like, I, I didn't, I actually didn't know what was happening. And uh, at that moment, so what I never forget is like, you know, my uh, my wife for mess. They sent me like the replay, and they were like, "Would you listen to the replay?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure." <laughs> so when I listened to the replay, I, I I just wrote them like, "Hey guys, this is not the time and moment, you know. Like we have, we we are under pressure so much." under yeah. the labels everyone you know don't fucking joke with me yeah because it was literally you know like someone with the guitar like you know singing like why don't you do red run but then you know like yeah and they were like well that's actual replay that the guy sent us mm-hmm. and i was like you must be joking because we paid everything in advance for 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 the replay and and, and everything and the guy just uh screw us over oh, he right. did like and and the problem was at that moment we didn't have any more time because uh, uh, EMI or Virgin or like mm. Positiva, which is like the EMI, I think. Positiva. EMI, yeah, yeah, EMI. They are the, 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 the they're holding the master rights, but it goes like you know Virgin and then like Positiva as their dance division at that moment. Okay. And uh, they were like, look, I talked with the guys in in, in Virgin in Positiva, and they're like, look. Uh, we see you have because everyone you know you know that in in the in the big scene everyone knows everyone and everyone yeah, yeah. knows yeah. you know with everything so they knew that like you know we know that you have a problem so look they were, they, they were like look we're gonna give you the the not such a good deal for this track mm. like everything that you made like selling it on beatport and yeah at by that time we were like number one everywhere and like everywhere literally on any any uh, as a guest house music and they're like look I ain't gonna sue you or anything we're just gonna you know uh, turn the, the the blind side yeah <laughs> yeah and we you just signed the deal and uh, you know we're gonna process this you know like a major label mm-hmm. and you're gonna get a contract for uh, some next track so you're gonna get the name and you're gonna get the the fame and then with the next track you know with the with the follow up you can uh, you can do whatever you want yeah. which of course never happened because it's a major and <laughs> yeah. things work differently there yeah. so uh, but yeah that's that's long story short is like yeah. how it how it all happened oh cool that's a very interesting story actually you know yeah it is I, yeah i mean like this is just like the you know this is just a just- really yeah, yeah, the gist of it. yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, I'm sure there was a there, there was a lot of talking and kind of tension. Oh, is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? You know, what, what are they going to say? You know, and so all all the kind of um, ang- almost like, a, like anxiety. You know, it is anxiety. Like, it is oh, anxiety. Shit, you know, come on, yeah, let's, let's because, go, let's do this. You know, yeah, yeah. From, the video because, is also video is also really cool. You know. Video. Yeah. The, the only thing, thank you. The only thing that when I was like talking with them, when we were like supposed to sign the contract and everything, and I was like, look. The only thing that I really would would like that uh, I, I'm, you know, all, all the dance, cl- uh, all the videos for the dance uh, songs mm. that time is like, you know, three naked girls yeah, went down the beach, swimming, getting yeah. out of the pool. And I was like, please, just don't do it. Let's not do that. Don't, just, <laughs> you know, let's let's make one video that's going to be like different because also, uh, I, I think that I had. I was really lucky, you know, like me hitting that is like, you know, getting the 
getting the 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 lottery or getting the you know hitting it's it's one in a million to get a such a crossover song mm. because i was really lucky enough that before it became commercial i everyone from the underground scene like actually the underground scene pushed it you know mm. like i was i was honored that you know people who who who, who made they they actually you know invented electronic music or like mm. you know hold the the, the whole Detroit scene, no. you know, cool DJs were like playing it, uh, and no uh, oh, cool the whole Chicago you know it was really the the proper crossover song that goes from the you know underground uh, and, and 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 then ends up you know at at UK top forty yeah cool fantastic so. Well, you know, so, co co congratulations anyway, because like, not, not a lot of not a lot of people can say that you know they, they they've done something like this. Uh, well, I, I'm you know I just think I just had a had a uh, I was well I did the track, but it was you know they're like bunch of songs every day like that. Mm. But you have to be you know right and environment, right moment. Yeah. I would say you have to be there. There's a part of luck, and I also think uh, when I teach my my students, I always tell them like you know. Uh, you gotta do what you love. Yeah. And you know, 2008, I didn't. I, I wasn't making minimal because it was. I was making something totally. You know, I was making something that no one was making. Sure. Yeah. And I think that was the. That was the, the. That's the. That's the thing. You know, like when you do something that uh, no one did before. Mm. Well, people did sample jazz, but you know, just with that kind of a twist. Yeah, of course. There's the, the luck, of course. Yeah, it's, it's it's luck, but it's also high production quality because it's uh, you know the the the, the way that track wasn't just like uh, you know it, somebody doing doing it on the laptop with the headphones on it, the plane or something like that. You it know? It's, is. It's, you can hear that it's it's proper production and it's it's. It it's, is well well it just sounds big. Yeah, thanks. I think yeah, still today it sounds big. And uh, also, what I'm really proud is like how it and how how it went out from my computer. Mm -hmm. It's on radio. There was no like. A any other post-production or anything else you know I did everything myself so but yeah I also think that's the reason the reason why I did it that good is as I said I did like before that I did a lot of uh, sound design and a lot of mm. post-production from film and for yeah. uh, uh, and from some series of so I think I was like you know 10, 10 years before that I was every day 24 seven in a studio you know when you have like music in your ears it just you know in in one moment it just has to come out the, the yeah. same thing i was like talking with the with the with the guys from camel fat you know mm. i also uh, n knew their production and i know mike mike this from 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 camel fat i know him like i i know their uh their, their songs like from 2002 or three like when they were like starting or like when i discovered them yeah. and you just see that you know they're like a bunch of producers uh you you just push 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 things and then you know if you, you if you're a little lucky something happens or you know but it's just like you know a lot of work behind that no that's of course i'm sure i'm sure yeah. and you know a lot of work on the track a lot of work before the track you know a lot of work getting to you know to to, to, to the equipment and to your setup yeah. and everything and yeah yeah i, I, I don't just think, think i don't think people think realize how much work goes into you know music yeah. production yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm sure they don't know and how many years <laughs> you need to actually you know to it, step it up. really is, it really is years yeah that you have the pop it really takes years and uh, yeah. i mean like you, you know some people make it uh, uh, you know, like in one or two or three years nowadays, because. But I suppose it, it's because what I said, it's the growing. You know, like uh, now you can literally uh, do everything. I mean, I'm from 2015. I switched to Ableton totally, so now I'm like in Ableton, yeah. and uh, yeah, Ableton 11 got out like a few months ago or something. Uh, I mean, these days. I really don't think you need anything else than yeah. just like Ableton, and you can do the, the production on a on a higher level. Yeah. But uh, what I think that young, you know, like that people don't have is what I say: music in your ears. It's like yeah. these. You, know, you can never. It just always takes like ten years to get like 
you know, to, to know to get somewhere to here to get something, you know, to get things to click. Yeah, there's there, there's not many Martin Garrixes, you know, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They get picked, they get picked up by exactly, the, uh, the exactly. big agencies and get pushed and marketed and you know, yeah, branded and and, and, and you know, the placed. thing is also it's actually, it's actually product, really, really clever product placement. That's, it is. That's, that's it what is. it is with the with the young, it is re, it is ultra young DJs. It is, but also people have to understand. I think that uh, all these guys. Like young guys, you know, it's when when I was young, there was a guy called uh, he was uh, uh, he was playing a violin, mm -hmm. Stefan Milenkovic, and uh, oh, yeah, I remember Stefan. Yeah, you know Stefan, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. So prodigy. you know prodigy. he was yeah prodigy. So yeah. he was like so these these young guys, you know, they are also prodigies, but in you know in, in it, it's just way. different time, yeah. yeah. So I see, but uh, really, really, what I wanted to talk about as well—it's the um, your, your your process of making music. You know, that's kind of uh, the the interesting things. Kind of like maybe you can go under the hood a little bit and and just just explain. You know, how how you start with the yeah. track. You know, where you, where you get your inspiration. Like, how do you get inspired? Is it from your head, or do you listen to stuff? You know, do you, do you jam with other people? Like, and and how do you huh. how do you it's, construct the track from the start? Really, it it, it changed uh, over the years, uh, but. I just, well, you know, back in the days, it was uh, it was sampling because uh, people don't understand like to to be good in sampling, mm. it's how you're gonna flip the sample. Yeah. And when I think when we were young, uh, when we were like sampling, the mm. point was not to be obvious that yeah. you know, it's you know you just chop a sample and you just loop it and no, it was that you twist it so much. That it's no one knows what it is. It's yeah. not, yeah. But you get this groove. You get this, this. So, like, well, now it's almost 20 years ago. It was like that. But uh, as I grow, uh, as my music production was like growing, um, I was also because I was writing music for other people. Uh, I was, I was writing music, you know, and uh, so it's it was some kind of a mixture of 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 that. And uh, how I approach is like, you know, sometimes it's just jamming, you know, with yourself. You just, you know, start with, a, I don't know, uh, some instrument or some hook or something. And you just, you know, sometimes uh, I, I remember like, uh, you know, uh, there, there's a track that I did called Gromo von Zilla. It's like when I got into the elevator, uh, the when the elevator was going down mm -hmm. it had some click and it had some that click had some melody and that melody is actually oh. like bah, 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 bah. It, it's in the track mm -hmm. so that yeah and i was like i just ran to to my room and i just like you know did the beat and just like bah, 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 okay that's it and just to get the groove of the of the because you know music is like it's five or six uh, notes mm -hmm. and when you play them it, they're just like notes mm -hmm. but the timing and the swing and how did they're gonna get accent in there that's the that's the music yeah. so uh, yeah so that could be inspiration also or uh, uh, or yeah listening to you know listening to still today like listening to other music uh, mm -hmm. gives gives you know uh, inspiration in a way like you know I want to make something you, you get inspired of course by someone and i want to m try to make something similar mm -hmm. and then when i try to when i try to make something like that i you know i end up somewhere else mm -hmm. but i get something you know different and also what i these days what really it really changed my uh, production a lot is like five six years ago i started like uh, I made a band which was called uh, Grom Fonzi Live Experience, which was like uh, I, I I got a little bit bored bored from uh, from DJing and uh, because there were no more records, it was just like CD players and CD players are like you know there there's not much fun. I was like playing on three <laughs> CD players and even that became kind of a boring to me in a way. No, I see. Li so it's I wanted kind of kind of limiting when you compare it to exactly to exactly the music exactly. playing in a band and. Exactly. I know what you mean. So, so I just like started. Uh, um, I and, and also I wanted to change something mm. uh, in my life, musical life. Cool. So I I made a band and uh, GLE. So uh, I got all the the songs uh, that uh, I produced 
by then and like I I uh, rearranged them for the band and it mm-hmm. was a cool. at first moment it was like five piece band then it's like you know like one trumpet more yeah. one trombone <laughs> or one is so we ended up like ten piece band <laughs> no, actually so nine not nine piece band yeah so especially in uh, Belgrade where you have some really good musicians. Yeah, 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 yeah. Belgrade, Belgrade is, I mean, it's historically yeah. known, you know, like when, really when you look at look from the 50s, 60s, 70s, you know, that is the scene there. Yeah. And, and with the jazz, with big bands, with, with, with also yeah, with, and, with, with this yeah, kind of yeah. electronic, electronic pop, uh, people like Oliver Mandic. And, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. It's actually, exactly. It's, and it's, I was, it's I was, legacy. it's got that legacy of, 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 you know, being a place with really good music. Yeah, well, thank I'm you. Not, yeah. I'm, I'm not talking about the folk. I'm not talking about the folk, yeah? <laughs> yeah, about but the other stuff. Look, 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 I'll tell you. The thing, the thing with folk is like, is, is what, uh, is, uh, what made me, uh, how to say, like, uh, have the advantage of, is like, because all these jazz guys, mm-hmm. because Belgrade has like a lot of good musicians, but you can't live from playing jazz, you know? So everyone, from my band, they're all playing in some popular folk or, you know, Bands, they're like yeah. really good, they're really good musicians, they're I really good that, yeah. players. Yeah. So also for them, like playing jazz and like touring with me and doing, and you know, like making music with me was like kind of a relief, yeah. you know, and they're like really Exciting. eager to get excited. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that was a, that was a really change in my, in my, in my, uh, perspective of music mm. and how I like produce music these days is now I kind of a, I came back to sampling again okay. but I sample myself yeah so yeah, why not yeah so I go with a uh, I go with a band in a studio and uh, we record the whole song mm. and we produce it I produce it like like a song like uh, and how to say like live one yeah yeah yeah. Then, like we mix, I uh, mix it, mastered, or even I, I know, uh, I have like uh, all my, all, most of the musicians in the band are also the producers, mm. and few of them have like really terrific studios in Belgrade, so record in in really good studios also. So it's really good crew. So some of the, you know, some some tracks they produce them because I don't want to be involved there, mm-hmm. so they produce. Uh, actually not produce but mix my music and mm-hmm. co-produce it and uh, when they do that then I sample the part from it and then I make a track yeah, good idea good idea so, and actually actually you don't have to deal you don't have to think about the copyright or you know the the, the exactly. co- audio crawlers on the on the, on yeah, the yeah. that so, actually so, discover the, the you know exactly. the so, sounds, so sounds. yeah 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 everything everything is all mine and <laughs> everything is ours and uh, so that's the that's the way how I produce these days and uh, usually everything starts with a beat mm. I think that uh, if you're talking technically now uh, for me the most important thing is beat for our music if the beat has a groove just the beat if you can listen to the loop yeah, of your yeah. beat for hours and not be bored yeah. that's a good foundation but and then the spine, whatever it's the spine of the track isn't it it's the spine the beat exactly. is the spine exactly that's the it's way the I spine. Look at it. exactly yeah. exactly and if you if you then whatever you put on it uh, like melody or uh, uh, and uh, I'm sorry. When I say beat, I also mean like beat and the bass, like the groove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When okay. you have groove, groove when, yeah, groove session. When it when it goes, then whatever you put on top of it, uh, even you can change styles. You know, if you put like m- more live uh, brass section, it goes more jazzy. If mm. you like syncopated, it goes jazzy. If you, I don't know, if you put three o three, you go more acid. If you yeah. put like you know, so from the from the same. I would say uh, it, then it's just like more like arranging how you're gonna arrange stuff and how you're gonna program other stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, that's actually how I work these days. And uh, yeah, I I also went back to drum and bass a little bit because wow. I got I got a little bit bored from from house beats uh, and uh, just wanted to you know just to uh, I, I use this. Uh, quarantine time yeah of course <laughs> you know I, I was just like okay i can't travel i can do so you know maybe it's it's time to do what yeah i really 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 you know like do the do track you want to do yeah totally for me yeah of course because yeah when we were like talking majors and we were talking labels and everyone 
Uh, it is unfortunately the thing that when you do something, uh, people pigeonhole you, yeah. so whether you like it Straight or not. Away. Yeah, so they, they need uh, to label you somehow, you know. So they need to yeah, say like, okay, exactly. you're, you're you're from there. Yeah, point, yeah, 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 yeah. But maybe I can, you know. Yeah, yeah maybe I can. Well, you know, maybe maybe yeah. I just don't have to do one thing, and, and you know, I, exactly. I, I, there's one life, no? So is it? Exactly. I always say that one one life is too short to be doing just one thing, you know. One thing, exactly. So yeah, I I switched out to drum and bass, and I did like two tracks, uh, two drum and bass tracks. And even do the video for one like mm. <laughs> with friends. Yeah, yeah. No, we 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 we'll link up all the stuff. We we'll link. Un oh, cool! So nice. people people can you know click nice. click on the j just so we don't interrupt the flow of the conversation with, yeah, with stuff. Cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah. 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 Um, to to kind of to kind of co continue on that. Um, so you, you're saying that the, the the groove the groove is very important, of course, and then the you know the 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 how do you say. Uh, everything uh, else everything else that goes everything on top else. it's it's yeah. it's you know kind of follows it, it, I, I, yeah, would say, it, I would say decoration almost like a decoration yeah because it's yeah, like a, yeah, it know, backbone exactly. and it's a de decoration and then you've got exactly. and then you've got the ear candy as well yeah the things that yeah. come in once or you know once twice, or twice. yeah yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. they kind of break up break up the pattern and that's that's exactly. actually the, the thing I I, I I wanted to talk to you about uh, this kind of and and I, I know um, that for, for a lot of producers I'm sure it's 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 always like a struggle to have this to, to strike the balance and it all it comes to taste what you want to do and, and and it really it's the uh, it's it's what I, what I'm trying to say is the amount of variation in 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 what's what's initially a, a very minimal track because because when you you're talking about the groove take any song like any any disco track any like if it doesn't have obviously if it doesn't have too many chords if it has maybe one or two chords yeah, and yeah. strip it to the to the to the dr drums and the bass you'll get the minimal track you know exactly and 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 especially if you take a, a piece and then you loop it and then you go out of that piece and then you loop another piece and then you go out of that piece and so on uh, how do you look at uh, repetition and variation in electronic music do you do you think that uh, uh, tracks are kind of I'm not gonna say better but do they appeal to you because because we're talking about you know your taste my taste we, we, we're in conversation uh, how, how, how do you look at uh, uh, the the repetition how, how much repetition is too much for you that's kind of the question hmm well there are, you know it, it goes down to if it's if it's good repetition it's mm. good you know what we said like if if something you have a hit if you know that you have a loop that you can listen to for days and not be not be bored of but also when i well i always say like when i teach because i teach music production so when I teach my students I always exactly try to explain that that you know they're like they're like grooves and who are like you know with these how to say them like behind the scenes stuff mm -hmm. you know so you have like one everyone has uh, let, let's let, let's talk about drum and bass you know I'm in break everyone knows about the I'm in break which is like yeah so everyone is using it but you know when you listen to uh, some producers it's the same I'm in break a a I'm in break but you enjoy it so much and with some producers or some young producers you're just like you know what is it yeah. so what is this so uh, I think the repetition is all these little quirks that is happening behind the scenes mm. and talking about the production side i i think that's the production mm -hmm. that's the difference with high level production and low level production mm -hmm. you know it's everything that that's why this repetition sounds nice mm -hmm. you know you can listen to it for hours is this small nuances that as you said like ear candy that is happening so when you say like you know uh what is the 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 you know uh, some tracks can be like boring in like two minutes yeah. and some tracks you know you can listen to to like ten minutes yeah. three hours whatever you know uh, and it's not just in our music it's in every music as you said like if you listen to classical music if you strip down any classical uh, you know song uh, it's it's most 
the the core is repetition and it's just everything else that is you know making this yeah. ear candy and i think in electronic music we don't use chords i mean like there are some producers who are like you you did you have the vari- vi- 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 variety 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 yeah, of uh, with the chords but for i would say like for my music mm. for house chicago house mm. it's little things that you don't hear but they're there you know like you're gonna get some sound like pan it left right you know or you're gonna put just like one small little as you say you know something just comes once and it's going to be once you know uh, in, in in first loop you're gonna l- hear it just a little bit then it's gonna go more in reverb then it's gonna go more in delay so okay. it's always there but you just like process it differently so you're using automation uh, and kind of like making a change uh, yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. you, you yeah. change everything so it just goes on and off and i know uh when i when i make a when i do it when i make a groove or idea or something and then when i want to uh make it the song because also there's a really really important thing uh when i when i'm also explaining to my students you know uh There are like two ways of production, like additive production, and uh, the other one is um, forming viewing. Uh, yeah, you know when you cut the stuff. Oh, so yeah, you, you uh, mean like edited, ed- additive, and um, my brain is uh, brainwashed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, you, mean like, you, you mean like and one subtractive, subtractive. subtractive. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's really, I think. Uh, when I was like making, started making music, I was always making music as a techno producer because all the guys that I knew around me, yeah, that I was like learning from, like I don't know, from Marco Nastic or from Decky or mm. from, uh, they were all like making beats, uh, sorry, loop, like you know, and then they they make the whole track in a loop, and then they kind of uh, just you know spread it along, and. Uh, i realized that I can't do like that because my music is a little bit different. Techno is an minimal, yeah. you know, you can do everything there and then you just strip down things and you just introduce thing by thing. Yeah. You make it to the climax and then just go back. You know, I would say that m- most of the most of the production is like that. Mm. But uh, in house music, it's more as you say like it's more like live, I would say. Mm. And it's more like I, I I hate that word, but I gotta use it like organic. No, yeah, it's, <laughs> I, no, it's organic, it's, but, I don't know. It's a, it's a good word. It's a good word. But it is. Because it's kind of and, explains explains it. Yeah, and 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 uh, in in I think in house music, I realized that I need to make a song, mm-hmm. and then I have to sit down and work. You know, all these little things. You know, yeah. you make an idea, and then I like okay. I did a song now how I gonna make this not being boring yeah you know how I'm gonna make this being more interesting being more uh, pleasing to you know but also to stay repetitive as you say because yeah. in our be, music yeah. repetitive is you know is the That's core the essence. Of thing. yeah yeah the essence. The essence. but but I always think that you know too um, this is the way I look at it too little repetition actually 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 too much repetition is boring and too much variation is kind of um, too much <laughs> no, 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 well I'm, I'm, I, again I'm looking for the word now uh, it's it, too much too much variation can be uh, kind of discerning some somehow it's it's it, it's uh, um, it kind of mm. puts you out of some kind of balance you know that, or yeah that maybe losing you. maybe losing the focus Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. It's, it's kind of uh, scattered, so you're yeah, not you're not yeah, you're, yeah. Yeah, you're not you're, you're not you're not able to kind of you know to hook onto the beat. Although though some some music is extremely extremely uh, varied, like some classical pieces. Uh, actually, when 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 you when you listen to Bach, you 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 you've played yeah, cello yeah, yeah. in the school. I played violin, so I've, I've, we 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 both played in the orchestra. Yeah, and, yeah. You, know, you know how it goes. It's actually every bar is different, you know, and and when and when you when you go under the hood. Of the, of the composition, you realize that there is a pattern, that that it's varied in 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 in, in, in different ways, and I, and I think this is knowledge that a lot of producers are kind of missing out on, you know, because it's you know it's it's too too easy to take a, a loop and a sample and make a section of I don't 
know, 32 bars, and then have another one, you know, take something out, put another, something else in, change the groove a bit, and then you have section B. And then, you know, you build it up like this. But to really, you know, take a riff or take a pattern, and uh, to, to really be able to vary it in an interesting way or even use polyrhythms, you know, like they use, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like they use in techno. Because w yeah. when, I, when, I, when I think about electronic music and, and these kind of uh, semi or minimalistic styles, you know, I always think about people like Steve Reich. Because he's, yeah, yeah. you know, he, he's been he's been uh, in in Africa for for years and years, you know, in Nigeria, uh, finding out about, about about the African beats and and interlocking rhythms as they as they call them, you know, the, yeah, yeah. the different rhythms that that, that 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 fit in together. One is maybe three beats long, and another one is like four beats long, you know. So so they kind of go around and around and around and around, and then they meet again, you know, at, again at some somewhere. Point. Yeah, yeah. I don't see too many people doing this, you know. I I I, I hear it in in, in in certain tracks. I I tell you I tell where I heard it I heard it in uh, um, uh, in Richie Horton sets you know he he, he does it sometimes he does, uh, yeah. and, and I heard it in Dennis Horvat he played a track in, mm -hmm. in, 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 the, in the in his time code set actually in, in in Belgrade where he dropped one of these tracks I think halfway through I think it was Anna and somebody else you know it's, so, so it's, it's very few people that 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 know and use polyrhythms and know about minimalism and 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 and, and at least varying styles and I think they just go, tough, yeah. they just go in into the studio uh, that's why I wanted to talk about the with you about the creating process cre creation process because they, they go into a studio and just chuck all the samples in, you know, spread them onto the onto the timeline. Maybe make a, like a, you know, go up and up and up and up. Have a breakdown, and then kind of build it up from there. Have a drop or hit, whatever you call it, and then you, you know you keep going to the end. And that's kind of most music is like that. Yeah, but it's boring, you know. And I gotta say, you know, most of this music is, you know, it, it, unfortunately these days it, it, it just, you know, uh, just you can hear it for like a few months and that's it. Uh, but you know, I also think it's because I was really lucky. I was really, really, really lucky because uh, all these things that you're saying, I I got from from jazz mm. because you know yeah, jazz is here. like you know. So uh, for me, I kind of a uh, this variety. Var right. <laughs> variety. <laughs> I have a problem with that word. Uh, this variety. Of as you said, I was polyrhythm is the same thing in jazz, and not just not just beats, it's everything else. You know, that's uh, that's uh, actually I had I have a track that, uh, and and the funny thing is, uh, I suppose because that's what we were talking at, at the beginning of the mm. conversation is like you know uh, how you grow through music. Uh, it's like, you know, some things you pick up uh, and you're not conscious of that. Mm. So I did a track and it was, uh, uh, I wrote it, actually I wrote it, and uh, it was like a piece with uh, trumpets and with like brass section and everything. And my friend was like, who was like playing it, he was like, man, like, uh, I'm so stoned that, you know, uh, I, I always thought you're just a DJ. Like, how did you came up with this? Yeah. Like, you know, this the, this is like, the there, there, there was some... Uh, there's like a uh, trumpet pattern, trumpet you know, that, that goes like, they're like in, in, in one uh, tempo and uh, actually I think uh, three eighths, is it, yeah, is it like three eighths? Is it yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah three eighths, yeah. And uh, the other one, so it's like, they're like different, but in one moment uh, they, they got, they get together, as you say, as a polar. Yeah. And yeah. that actually, that makes the, 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 the song, uh, escalate and you know that that, that brings up the energy mm. and i just suppose i was you know i was lucky enough i didn't know what i did i just liked it and then uh, because i have elementary school music school i don't have i never went to to uh any, anything higher yeah, so but it's still six years no yeah it six is or it seven is. years yeah but music school you, when you're really young and i think i you know, just the, you know it's very important yeah, yeah it is important but you know i course. never i never i never went into this you know i never learned composition as you know i just hear things and the i was when i say i was lucky i was lucky enough to be uh to meet people who mm -hmm. kind of explain me what is happening and what actually I was hearing in my head, yeah. and also the other thing that happened that happened to me, like I was I was lucky enough. Uh, uh, also, talking about like great musicians from Belgrade, mm. 
I had a percussionist. Uh, my percussionist, my uh, got sick, so uh, he was like, "Hey, but there's like other guy. I go, I, you call him and see if he's free." So I called the guy, and he was like, "Yeah, man, I would like to go for you, like you know, for the tour or anything." And uh, also, I was so embarrassed because I didn't know the guy, mm. and, and the guy started like. I was like, "Who the fuck are you, man?" And it ended up the guy is um, uh, he was his percussionist for the Kuti for all right, Fela Kuti and oh, Femi Kuti. Femi Kuti. Yeah, I've done. No, no, no. I've, I've he, done. He, I've done an interview with Femi Kuti once. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually online. It's on YouTube. Nice. Yeah. So he is the percussionist for the, and I was like. So you are traveling. He was like, "Yeah, I'm the only white guy in the band," and like we're ah. like, and I was like, "And you're from Belgrade?" And I was like, "And no one knows, and I don't know." Wow! So, I didn't know that. Yeah, That's yeah, you. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So his name is Igor, and uh, and uh, uh, the thing is, um, uh, there I also picked up from him, like he explained me the things because I don't know. You know, I have percussions in my, but mm. all the percussions are, you know, we, uh, I'm, I'm in like, you know, uh, one to sixteen on one, one to thirty-two, and I have like uh, swings, and I have like dotted notes, mm. and I have like accents mm. and everything. Mm. So I was always, you know, MIDI was, you know, when when I got into, you know, in 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 our programs, I was always programming that in MIDI. And I know what I wanted to hear. And then this guy, he explained me like, you know, because he's in, you know, Africa. Uh, he, he he lived there, and he 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 really, you know, he showed me so much stuff. And I was no, like, of course. Wow, so, wow. there is so much. So and, and, and what, that's, that's what you say. Sorry, just, just yeah, yeah, yeah. say like. Also, Go I I didn't see much people, much producers. Uh, using, uh, as you say, polyrhythms, and using what you say, like you know, you yeah. start with with with, you know, uh, a loop. There is like you know three bars, and the other one is five bars, and they're gonna meet somewhere, and then underneath yeah. you have, so you kind of lose yourself in 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 the groove. Yeah. And I just think it's because uh, we are pretty locked up, uh, uh, not locked up, we're, you know. Uh, Conditioned. I think, I think we're days, conditioned by by what's 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 exactly in the and what's on the board and no, not just that. Like that. It's it's more making music when you see you know when you see the MIDI uh, in in Ableton or you just see the dots or you just see the notes okay. yeah, yeah. and everything is like visual representation yeah. and you can't you know I, I don't know much um, producer these days that you know sit down and you know do the do the beat mm -hmm. themselves mm -hmm. and that's also what will change in, in in my production is like these days now i uh I, I never played drums and i just like started like playing drums a little bit nice. and playing you know, trying to 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 you know to get these little nuances yeah. and these little things little little swings and little uh that, that's what makes groove better and that's what makes uh and also yeah for for the for the technical side of production you know even if you uh if you do some beat mm -hmm. and if you just take the microphone and just take like you know like just this and just like yeah. record it over your beat yeah. at home and just put it underneath you're gonna get like more yeah. better it's gonna sound better. Yeah, it's gonna sound like but but what, what I just wanted to say to you is that <clears throat> I think because I I worked same as you you know I worked with with, with many people in the studio and because uh, because I was an engineer and co-producer producer whatever and um, uh, I, I I remember from my experience that people were, were you know they would bring they would bring stuff and uh, kind of like you know listen to it and maybe sample some things and start from there you know but mainly it was. Other music that it's like the music we're making. For so, for instance, if we're making a techno record, they would bring 10, 
te techno vinyls, you know, and, and then you kind of go from there. But, you know, there is so much potential and ideas in, in, in non-electronic music, you know, like like you said, like African grooves, uh, like any any world music, really, like, if, you know, like stuff that it's, uh, you know, groovy and aesthetically it's, it's, it's on the level. It's not just some, you know, just some crap, some folk crap, you know, but it's actually, you know, really, really, really good music. Uh, and, you know, to, to kind of draw, what, what I'm suggesting is to draw from there rather than yeah, yeah, yeah. to keep going to, to, to stuff that is conditioning us, you know, for this, uh, in, in this era. You know, I think it's just um, people are, I think, afraid to experiment, you know, because when you experiment, uh, it, it is kind of a gamble, mm. you know, it is a gamble, and uh, but I have this um, kind of a um, light motive is in music. If you like something yourself, mm. there must be someone else in the world that likes it too. Yeah, and you, it, it's just a matter of taste or luck if it's going to be like three people who like that or like three million people. Yeah, and how how it's gonna you know how it's gonna and it, also it takes time to grow. Yeah. you know and uh, which sometimes can be pretty boring which we were like talking about the pigeonholing th yeah. stuff you know by the time that everyone uh, that crowd uh, discovered me everyone was like yeah swing house and everything and I was like oh this was like four years ago that's so fucking boring I'm doing something totally different yeah. and then they expect you to do that and you're not doing that so uh, that's that, that that could be a little bit frustrating, and I was always like asking myself like for the uh, for the like uh, you know big musicians. I mean like big music like you know uh, Rolling Stones. Like you know uh, they have like so much songs, but everyone loves like maybe five of them, mm. and they always you know they perform these five songs mm. like gazillion gazillion times over the like. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Of course, of course, that's, so, that's what they do. I think it was Bregovic who said, "Like, be careful what what music you write because you're gonna be st st stuck with it for a very stuck long with it time. for a very long you know, time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, yeah, especially if you have, if if you if you if you make like a really cheesy hit, for instance, yeah. and and it, it makes you a lot of money. Like everybody on the concert wants you to play the cheesy hit. You know, they don't care about yeah. your. Okay, they care. You know, to the point about your credible stuff and about yeah. your jazz fusion. About yeah, your, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're they're they're, 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 they're Came like, for the oh, song. Yeah, that's cool. But but they want yeah. the you know initially exactly. they want, they want they, the lala. They they the la -la. the la -la. Actually the la -la. actually actually that happened to me so many times. Like <laughs> when I'm you know go on, uh, as a DJ and I play the, and then the, the promoter when I'm like finishing he's like, are you gonna play your track? <laughs> exactly. Like, you, didn't, you didn't play it. And I was like, oh really? <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. I played. Yeah, you yeah, know? Of course. So because of everyone course. came to hear it. So the, yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a. It's a you know, on one side it's really sweet thing, but on the other side it's kind of a, it, it exactly. can be really, you know, pretty pretty yeah, yeah, burden. Yeah. yeah, that happened to me with Partisan, you know, with the, with the, <laughs> the record. You know, okay, you were, I mean, I'm I, I, to be honest with you, I was never really into politics, you know that. You know, my, I never like even today. I'm kind of like I'm trying not to like watch television news or kind of like cut myself up because you know we're musicians, we're producers, we kind of in exactly. studio, making music. We don't want to be, you know, infiltrated, intoxicated by this bloody, you know, political bullshit. I'll call it, you know. And uh, but still, you know, when when I when I when I found that record with 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 uh, with with Mr. President's speeches, you know, yeah, uh, I've, uh, I've I I was looking for 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 the non-political part. You know, I was looking uh -huh, for, some, uh -huh. for, for something that it's, you know, okay, talking about the unity and talking about the, you know, togetherness and, yeah, yeah, yeah. you, you know, know, the, the way yeah, the world should be, you know, John Lennon's yeah, kind of you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. way of thinking. But 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 then it, it, it turned that every gig I went to, you know, people wanted me to, to play that track. And, and I, I was like, yeah, I've got, I've got, I've got, you know, the stack of these amazing promos. I'm going to, you know, go and, you know, play this one, play this one, play this one. It's a lot of great. People are dancing, you know, they're having great time. And it's like, and then it's promoter. Are you going to play the track? <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> All right, then. Let's go. <laughs> Everyone is waiting for that. Yeah. <laughs> you have your, you have your, your, your fun. Now, 
play as a track. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You've done your credible yes, stuff. Yes, All right. Yes, yes. Give us okay. the cheese. Well, uh, actually, that track is, is is not the cheese. Actually, your your track also. You, you you've managed to, you know, to to make. Uh, th th that's why it's you know the the the, the track your track is 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 uh, why don't you? It's so impressive because it's uh, you know of course it's it's a famous it's a famous track you know from back in the day, but you've made it credible. You know, you, 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 it was actually, you know, done with the, with, with a good taste. That's, that's yeah. That's, well, thank you, thank thought. you. But yeah, from the beginning, you know, it was never it, it happened to it. You know, it was never. Uh, I, I never sat down. I was like, you know, I, I want to, or I never had an aspiration mm. to make a big record. You know, I had an aspiration to make something that I'm gonna, you know, that's gonna amuse me, and then mm. that I'm gonna be happy playing in a club for like. 150 people in Belgrade yeah. who were like, you know, following what, what, what I was doing. Mm. And that's all. Yeah, cool. And then, you know, it just happened, you know, that's, and, and the funny thing is like, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the guys, uh, Yolanda Be Cool, yeah. Uh, with, yeah, yeah. with their track, we know speaking, uh, yeah, well, I met them and we're like really good friends now. And cool. actually, <laughs> actually they made the track, they made their track because uh, they liked my track and they were like playing my track, but they were like, there was nothing else, you know, stylistically same mm -hmm. as, as your track. So we wanted to make something, you know, and they made the track like as a joke mm -hmm. and it exploded also. So, you know, they also never, never wanted it to be like, you know, that it, it was never intended to be like that. Mm. So that's also fun. No, fun, but, fun, fun fact. <laughs> but 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 it's it, like like you say, it's a gamble. You know, like making music is. You know, even even when you're following, uh, you know, all all the uh, how can I say tried and tested riffs and tried and tested records. You know, when you take them out and kind of make a uh, you know one record out of ten. You know, take twenty records and make one. You know, t take a bit from here, a bit from there, a bit from there, a bit from there, and make, you know, and and I'm not talking about sampling. I'm talking about you know, just yeah, yeah, kind of re re yeah. replaying and getting the info, you know, inspiration, yeah, yeah. getting the information, but then kind of changing it, adapting it, varying it, but whatever. There is no guarantee that this is going to be uh, look you know, this, uh, hit. No matter look, how, how much money course. you spend on your PR. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The you know, the, the, the good record out of the window. Good good record is a good record. Uh, as, as you say, you never know. Like I made like bunch of other records, which I really think are the good or even better than the one that is a hit, but. Mm. There are like few of them that have like they have like maybe ten thousand views on YouTube or like mm. Mm. plays or something, mm. and I still I really love them and I really enjoy them and I enjoy them making them and I think they're hit, mm. <laughs> you know they're as good as this one but they just didn't click yeah. or, or it's just not the the right moment for them or maybe who yeah, knows that's, that's maybe in fifty that's years. Maybe you know. Maybe in fifty years, you know, someone is going to exactly. um, you know, discover that and do the do, do the, the do the cover or something. It's going to be big. Yeah. Who knows? But timing yeah. is very important. Timing. I, I think know, timing is the most important thing. Of course, you have to have quality. You know, like if if if, you, if, you, if you're not quality producer, if you didn't spend the time in the studio, if you didn't you know uh, develop your craft, it's not going to happen. You know, it's, you, of, course. You, of course. People people won't hear the you know what you've done because it's going to yeah. be kind I mean, of like when, bad, when, when, bad, bad mixed, but badly mixed and everything. But really, you know, w w once you like you said it earlier, you said it earlier with the trends. You know that now is the trend. You know with the tech house and with the, with with the vocals. Um, you know, a little bit more credible kind of sounding. Uh, you know, not so not so obvious. Uh, and you know, people who release the track that it's in line with all, especially with TikTok now and and platforms like that. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. which is all yeah. about the trend. You know, if you, yeah, if, yeah. If, you, if you get if you get the record out on TikTok, and some you know crazy dancers from America does something you know really weird, or actually you hire the dancer, you know, like somebody who's yeah, yeah. really kind of original, weird, and does this thing that everybody can copy. You know, this track is gonna blow. So this is actually how it changed from the vinyl days where we used to sell in the nineties, eighties, nineties used to sell send white labels and people would you know break the record and you would send it to the DJs on Radio One or, or whatever but now it's 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 kind of like if it blows on TikTok you know yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you get like 5 million views or 10 million yeah. some views plays on Spotify yeah i yeah it, it it's it's when you break a record like commercially but uh, still uh you know when you release underground music and i still consider myself uh well 
I don't know, I'm I'm some, somewhere in the middle, but like when I'm making house music, I'm still consider myself like being more underground than commercial mm. because everything that I make is kind of a sound more underground than commercial. Yeah, I mean. So uh, I I still think there are like little niches, you know, there's still like little, I would say like communities of people yeah. who, who uh, and they're still the same as it was like 10 years ago when I, when, when I blew up, you know, the, the the song that I the songs that I was making were like uh, aimed to to my f- you know little clique of five hundred people from the underground house music mm-hmm. forum you know and everyone was like and bunch of bunch of I gotta say like bunch of uh, producers from mm-hmm. I don't know uh, maybe you know about the guy called Wolfgang Gartner he is like mm-hmm. doing like yeah, he is the bell. Rings the bell. yeah he's like yeah. doing uh, I don't know EDM commercial EDM. Oh. The guy is called Joy Angman, and he did like uh, in one moment, like 2006, 2007. He was doing like the 95 production mm. uh, of Jacking House, like in there were like f- six or or ten uh, different names, different aliases. Uh, yeah. uh, he, he was like under, and he was like pushing the whole scene. He was the whole Jacking House scene at the moment, mm. <laughs> and. Uh, and the fun, the what I'm saying is like everything that he did as a Jacking House producer never blew up, never happened. And then he moved to EDM, and he, you know, like after two tracks, his tracks got picked up, I think, by Dead Mouse or something like mm. someone like that. And he like blew up like totally, and he's like, you know, uh, yeah. picking his his third Ferrari or something. But uh, it, it, that's uh, that's the thing, you know, uh, if uh s- some people uh, but just to be just to just to s- say for joy he never also he was never into music as i would as i see because he would be like you buy a good car or mm. buy this but mm. he he loved the jacking house and he i think still makes jacking house or house and he's he's just like uh such a prolific producer yeah. that he was just like doing everything you know of course. and and he just blew up in this you know EDM scene at the moment so he was like doing five different projects and this one uh, uh, just blew up because it was the moment for that kind of sound yeah you know so that's what I'm saying you know when he was doing much of Jacking House it was 2006 2007 2000, it was yeah. too early I hit the spot you know yeah that's what I that's the, that's the, that's the point mm-hmm. of boring everybody. but but it's it's actually quite interesting what what you said about the you know the the, the underground artist and 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 uh, the the mainstream artists. Um, I always think that underground. You know, but people o- o- often ask, you know, have to ask us, you know, what is underground? Is this underground? You know, uh, what exactly is underground? You know, and and I think of of course underground is, you know, but something that it's um, you know artistic, credible, that it's cool, that it's not not kind of not necessarily um, you know financially exploitable or or or, or that commercial. Um, well. <laughs> okay, but, but I always think that the underground is the the um, uh, it, it's it's it depends on your perspective. Is the, is the, is the is the question of perspective? It's 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 if you know for 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 somebody who's like a hardcore, you know, techno fan, for him it's like only banging techno, like really hard, like Joy Mool techno. Yeah, that's underground, you know. But yeah. for for some grandma, you know, that was born in in your know, 1920 or 1930, uh, and we're listening to folk music all her life, you know, to her, ABBA is underground. Yeah, of course. Is underground, of course. You know, so it's it's it, you know that's that's good. But you know, the, 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 what I was really trying to say is the you you can only be as underground uh, as you can afford to be underground. You know, because it, because if you're if you're kind of living in a squat and have no money and making banging techno, okay, that's the, that, that's another way. But if if you if you have maybe uh, something that is paying for your for your art, if you're not making money from it, you know, then you can be underground. But you know, people get children. You know, they get the mortgage mortgages. They yeah, get, you know, exactly. Responsibility, responsibility, and and it's it's it becomes harder and harder and harder to you know to 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 stay underground. You know, and stay uh, uh, like really artistic. I'm talking about, you know. Well, yeah, but you know, also comes in. But but also, you know, the thing is, uh, when you say underground, when I was like uh, making music, I was like making it because I thought it's underground, and then it's just like 
crossed Crossed over. to commercial yeah and then i realized like in one moment i was like playing some festivals and when i was on lineups i always saw myself as underground Mm. and i was playing jacking house or like chicago house everywhere Mm. (laughs) and it was so funny because i was you know uh, what we said like you know come on play that your stuff play us the the, the song and go home you know that was (laughs) that was Mm -hmm. the thing because it's how you see yourself and how others see you because also you know underground i don't know if you say let, let's 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 take this take out like jamie jones i know jamie jones and uh, i met them i think and uh set i met them i think and we played i don't know 2010 11 12 mm-hmm. something like in glasgow in sub club or somewhere or something like that mm-hmm. i'm not i can't remember and uh you know, now they're like playing arenas. They're playing the same music. Mm-hmm. Is is that you know? And they they they, they cost you know. They're flying jets to 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 the gigs. Are they are they underground or not? Is that underground music or not? Because you know, if you go and check, I don't know, song. Uh, I just saw like Jamie Jones, like you know, he got the plate. I think platinum, gold or platinum one for mm-hmm. for a track. If you get like. Uh, you know, uh, two million listens or two million downloads or two million, you know, that's not underground anymore. Mm. It's just cool music, you know, going and making, uh, you know, get, getting the commercial success. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a philosophical topic. But it's also <laughs> kind of warms, you know, because you, you can kind of, you know, you open it up and then it kind of, it, you can talk about it for, you know, forever. And there's so forever, many points, yeah. of points of view, you know. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, the, it's the same how, thing, you know, what is, what is older, chicken or the egg, or, you know, like, yeah. it's, it's, it's that kind of a talk. But, 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 <laughs> it's, but it's also a, a serotonin thing, you know, because you say uh, it's like two, two, two geezers, you know, looking at each other at the gym and going like, you know, whose biceps yeah. are, are are bigger you know it's like you know yeah. are you more underground than me you know is, yeah. are you underground enough you know how underground are you oh you know underground oh no no you're not good you know you, oh, you, you're it, underground oh fucking great you know you know what what at one moment i just uh uh at the end i was just like you know because i had like big dilemma with myself like you know am i underground i'm like what what am i i had like this uh, kind of a uh, identity problem you know like, <laughs> yeah. identity you know? crisis yeah cri- <laughs> a sh- yeah, serious one yeah and then i was like okay i was like okay uh for me underground is if you're making music not if the only reason for making music is to make yourself happy mm. and other people happy that's a great point and that's it, you know. So that's what I. That, 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 that's that's my life motive. Is like you know, I like my song. Mm. If there are like two people who like it, great. If there are like ten people, better. If like three million people, you know, <laughs> it's still Ferrari, the same. Bring it on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the 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 this from the from the big from this you know moment of making that's the that's the thing. That's why I still think. I'm underground, yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> which no, of my wife don't think so, but, but <laughs> and everyone else. But, you know, but I was always seeing myself underground because I never make, I never made these these tracks because I wanted to have a new phone or a new car or new, mm. you know, fly business class or whatever. Uh, I always wanted to make music just to make my, you know, just to play it in a club and be happy, mm. and that's all. What do you think about uh, young people today and their their taste in music and their methodologies and stuff like that? Because obviously you you, you teach at SAE, right? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Belgrade. So we we we're both uh, we both SAE experience. SAE, yeah, yeah. SAE, SAE is is uh, alumni is here. <laughs> is here. <laughs> uh, well, you know, um, people, young people who have taste and who you know, they are always. Uh, maybe I'm gonna be like I'm a teacher, so I'm not supposed to say this, but who cares? There is always like people with taste and people without taste, mm. and there are always people who want to get, uh, who have like different reasons for doing something. Mm. You know, they're, they're always gonna be. Uh, you know, I always meet young DJs or young kids. Uh, you know, their life motive is like you know they want to fly business class and they want to you know play big gigs, not because. Of playing music is because of the you know how they go social status yeah. but there's still kids who are like there 
because you know when they hear the beat you know they, 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 their heart you know uh, yeah, yeah 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 so and and they don't care about like you know they're just there for the music and also you can see that they're still uh, uh, the, the, the really small amount of them, but there are still kids who are like listening to music. There are still kids who are uh, uh, exploring music, you know, who, who when they hear the sample, they want to know who sampled it and then they want to know who did the cover. You know, they want to go the whole, the whole journey yeah. to, 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 the, to, the, to the roots of the... Mm. So it's always, you know, I think at the end it comes from the family. <laughs> I would yeah. say, you know, like how, you from know... Upbringing. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, I I just think yeah for the kids it, it's just like that, you know. And you you hear, uh, I can hear now when some in, I, I have like two labels and I get like bunch of promos still, and I don't have time to listen to to, to promos. Actually, I stopped listening to bunch of promos because everyone is like just sending you like bunch of mm. uh, they did they, they don't even. Uh, they don't even take time mm. to listen what is your label making yeah. what is your label about what is your label releasing Concept. yeah they just like take you know just like mails and just like you know send mm. and uh, i think that is something uh that is putting all this the, the whole scene and the whole music and everything back mm. that is like taking it back uh two two steps back because Everyone, as you say, like TikTok, everyone now wants to make a little, I don't know, eight seconds yeah. interesting loop that's going to, you know, blow up on TikTok. And I'm sure, like, I'm giving, like, my left hand, my right hand, that, like, in six, not, not next year, like, in six months, something that is, like, blowing up on TikTok, mm. no one is going to remember it. And I don't, I mean, like... Great point. Great point. Yeah, 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 but because it's uh, already happening, I can already see it. You know, yeah, yeah. that people, people you know, bring out it, little snippets of something, and it's in, in two weeks, it's gone, and and it's, it's like in not, two months, you're already, you know, looking at it as a classic. You know, two months, and 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 you know, like uh, there there are still there there is still music, there's still people making music, and it takes a lot of time to get to our ears, but when we get to our ears, you know, it stays there. Mm. You know, there's still producers. Could take a lot of time, but uh, to you know to get them to to get to them just to just to know who they are. Yes. But their music stays, and my their, their music stays in my crate, and it stays my in my playlist or whatever. And I'm gonna play their their music like I'm playing this this uh, uh, French house guys from 25 years ago. And le let's be honest, like 25 years ago. Uh, from 100 records, you know, you had like 25 good and everything else was just like, you know, 75% was like trying to be like this 25%. Mm. And, you know, there are always copycats and there are always people trying to, you know, or just like growing or something. Yeah. So, but I think now these days from 100 records, I mean like from 100 promos, if I pick two, I'm it, it, it was lucky day. Yes. And, uh, but, but I just think it's, you know, like everyone can make music. And I also think that these things going to go back a little bit because now, uh, I don't know if you are, I'm, I'm pretty much into band camp and into like printing vinyls, mm. like doing, doing special stuff again on vinyl. And I think the vinyl is really good, um, really good, how to say, uh, barrier between you know if you want to still these days if you want to press something on vinyl you need to you know you can't go like everyone else and uh, pick up like label works distribution hello hi i have a label i want to release music and then you just like put music you know and, and that costs nothing you know still today for vinyl if you want to put something out you know you have to have pre-sale mm. some serious pre-sale for i don't know juno or ben had to 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 press the vinyl or if you want to do it yourself, it's going it's going to cost you like two three grand. So I think that's a that's a uh, I would say barrier for like uh, or dam, you know, that just lets uh, good music go over. Yeah, and, sure. and people are like, listen, you know, if you want to, uh, 
spend money or something uh, and push it that way. Uh, I just think that you know, uh, better music is it's coming back. I would yeah. say. Yeah, yeah, but but look, uh, it, you know, it, music industry, as you know, it's been you know, it's, it's changing. It's in flux. You know, music music industry is not something that is kind of like you know the same. Yeah, of course. Some things are the same over the years. Like you know, you need to have quality. That's kind of the same. You know, <clears throat> well, for for. Yeah. For, for 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 most people you know um, but uh, that are you know busy and uh, you know that, that are doing their, their, their job properly you know in, in, in record labels but you know there are there are obviously you know you you've seen it when 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 the vinyl kind of stopped selling and when the mp3 mp3s became, became uh, like 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 the main thing right uh, but now it's it's all it's it's changing all over again because obviously uh, you're not going to be able to to to, to make the same money uh, that that you used to make in the 80s or 90s from the sales. You know, like you 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 might have a lot of streams or a lot of downloads, um, but it's 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 kind of it's still away from 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 what it was. But but now, what, what do you think about these new ways now for 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 music industry such as um, crowdfunding or or even NFTs? You know, the, the 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 new cryptocurrency thing that it's kind of like taking the world oh. by storm. Yeah, NFTs. Yeah, I uh, I realized. Yeah, I gotta be honest. Like when NFTs came out, like uh, I, I got into that like two months ago. I was like, what an NFT is? And then I I was never into cryptocurrencies, like you know, and blockchain and everything. So mm. I literally sit down and listen to to to, to few like tutorials, like mm. what a blockchain is and what currencies are or cryptocurrencies and then i come to nfts it's really exciting and i mean if, if, it it is hap- exciting. if it happens properly i think it's going if to be it, just so good for, for musicians yeah i that's what i'm afraid of <laughs> if it happens <laughs> properly like <laughs> yeah. we also thought that you know like when the napster came 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 out we we're like yeah that's cool but it didn't live so uh, it's exciting, anyway. It's exciting. It's, it it uh, is exciting. Uh, yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm just eager to see what's going to happen. You know. Yeah, I'm. It, it is exciting to see what's going to happen, but I can think. I'm afraid that it's going to lose its value because everyone too, too is stuff. going to start like doing it just because it's you know it's the thing, mm. and not because. And I checked some NFTs, you know, like. They're like phenomenal things, hmm. like really, really, really that, cool things. Yeah. Especially, especially for the uh, for the like visual 3D stuff that I yeah. saw. I was like, wow, uh, I, I I I didn't know this exists, and I I, I want this. So uh, from that, you know, but as you said, the quality always gonna find its way. It's going to be like you know, a few percent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you always you just gonna need to dig more. It's a test of time, you know. This that's, that's what yeah. always happens, you know. If if it if it survives, like you said, uh, you know, same thing apply on a, uh, same things apply on a micro and macro level. If you have, uh, you know, the, the the loop that you can listen to three hours, you know, you know it's you know it survived those three hours or four hours in your in your head. If you have yeah. a record that survived from the eighties or seventies today, it, it, there must be something good about about okay, the yeah, yeah, yeah. So so yeah, I, exactly. I think it's 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 gonna be the, it's, it's the same thing will happen with uh, with. With, with this uh, new 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 way you know people people we, we, people might might buy a lot of shit at the beginning and think they're going to make money but then yeah. they, this shit is going to lose the value and then they, 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 they they're going to learn the important lesson you know what Look, it is it, don't, it's, uh, important uh, lesson is don't buy shit like no, you know, impo- if you're going to buy anything lesson, buy something like amazing if you can impo- afford it. Impo- important lesson is like uh, it, it's this, I think the good power is like with uh, analog drum machines and analog equipment you know like 10 years ago uh, I was offered like 808 for like 200 euros and I was like well I don't know should I buy it or not and now you can't find 808 under mm-hmm. like 10k yeah. <laughs> the original one like the 10K. properly one working yeah, eight oh eight. Go and check it. They, yeah, it's like the it's really like good one. Is like eight, eight to ten k. That's crazy. I used yeah. to have one. I used to have one. I sold it years ago. Uh, me too. I used to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I sold everything. And but there's I sampled, the same thing. I sampled like, it though. It sampled. So I sampled. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it as also as the turntables. You know, like ten years ago, you can buy uh, twelve ten. You know, like for. Or twelve hundred, you can buy for like I don't know, 
200 euros mm. now like the second hand ones with like hardly working are like five six seven hundred yeah. because you know records so i think you know it's, it's going to be same thing also as for as for uh nfts or like mm. for, for everything else the only thing that i like uh, about nfts is um they kind of a uh, have this from start they have this kind of a value mm. which if you compare music to i don't know streaming services mm. like i don't know spotify or whatever else it's kind of a losing value mm. i don't you, you get me so i think that yeah the nfts are cool because it's going to be they are a little bit different and special, yeah. you know. From the start, there is like something, yeah. and here this is just a batch of like everything, and they're like releasing three, you know, thirty thousand songs every day, and it, you know, it just, and we'll see, we'll see. You know, you know what's really interesting to me about the NFTs is the fact that you can. Uh, embed a code like a, a protection, some kind of protection code into into the di into digital art. You know, so so you, you can th there is a way to yeah, there's to, a way to, to protect to, it to, to protect it and to yeah, copyright yeah. it. You know, that's yeah, the, yeah. that's the main thing because how do you do that with the MP3? You can't do that with the MP3. You, you know? can't do that. You know, you, yeah. you can you can maybe you can have this uh, what is it called? Um, it, it's it's kind of embedded into an MP3, so they know where you downloaded it from. Oh yeah, it's it's metadata. A, metadata. Yeah. It's, it's, metadata yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's a line in the in the metadata somewhere the metadata. That, that actually said where you where you downloaded and everything. But this is a lot more embedded. It's a lot more inside. The, yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is. It, it, it is. Uh, it is very. Works. I'm, I'm is, only scratching the surface as well now. You know. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, well, I'm, I I got it. Story. Like it's 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 locked. It's buried in the blockchain, so you mm. can't change it. Yeah. And every time someone sells it, like you know, if you if you uh, give it to someone to sell it more, or if it's possible, and and also you always uh, keep the original creator always keeps like at least ten percent. Of the original one, so if if it if it gets copied, you always get like you get the percentage. Yeah, if it gets it, sold, you it, get the you, you exactly. Get the you you, you can't. Yeah, you can't. You you know you you are so from that re from from that side. As as I said, that's that's what I actually wanted to say. I, I wasn't clear enough. Mm -hmm. um, uh, is that's why it's more. I wouldn't say precious. It's more like. Uh, yeah, as you said, protected than like you know putting stuff on on Spotify or everywhere else. Yeah. So uh, it's you know when you put it on Spotify, it's just like out there and uh, it's in the sea of everywhere, uh, everything, and it's really hard to find something that you like. Uh, but I think yeah, with NFTs, it it's gonna well we'll see how it's gonna go. But yeah. I, at this moment, I see it's it's bringing the value more for something that is. You know, sure. and, and also you can you know you can hook up an NFT with like the physical thing, so you can press like I don't know hundred records, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and you know you can have like hundred NFTs that actually have physical yeah. Thing but behind. Then, but then so. if somebody if if you say you can do the same with 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 the artwork, you can have like the digital digital yeah. main digital copy, and you can have a physical copy. But physical then what happens? Then what's happening if you if you if you sell it, and then uh, you, you you have to obviously send the artwork, and yeah. then if you resell it. The guy has to send, or girl has to send it to another person. You know? person. So, yeah, so, yeah. So, so, so there needs to be, there still needs to be a lot of shipping, but, but work, kind of yeah. coming out of out of the, the NFT NFT um, system, whatever. Uh, anyway, we're very exciting stuff. Um, so, shall we close with the um, with uh, with the future? Let's close with the future. So, what's what's next for you? What are you working on at the moment? What's what, what's you know? Are you going to be making some NFTs? Or, you know, what's, uh, well, yeah, I'm trying to. <laughs> what's your vision from now I, on? Uh, well, to be honest, at this moment, I'm I'm making a little break. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, um, I'm not breaking. Like, I didn't make music for like maybe two months or something. Mm -hmm. None of it. Uh, and I'm now uh, preparing. I'm coming back with. I have this label called Disco Zoo Records, okay. which was like I started with 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 some friends like some 11 12 years ago yeah, we'll, link it. And we'll it, link it in the description we'll put it down yeah, yeah it's it's yeah. dead for like last i didn't release anything for like last five six seven years or something mm -hmm. like that but now um i'm kind of a 
I, I have some new new young 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 lads uh, abroad uh, aboard uh, with uh, uh, and they're gonna work you know they, they they're young and they're like they know what young people want mm, <laughs> so we're gonna I gonna be curator for like the music and we're gonna wrap it cool. all with NFTs and with merchandise and with records we're gonna go with the records mm. so uh, there's a there's a there's a future that's what I hope gonna kick off this year, maybe end of this year or maybe beginning of next. Mm. And um, yeah, I'm I'm doing few 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 songs uh, uh, with the with the band. I'm finishing some stuff that I did like last few years. I'm just rapping things, and I'm rapping my I I I'm, think I, I told this like uh, this lie. Uh, of releasing album last 10 years but now <laughs> mm. i'm so close to the album like wrapping things everything oh, like to, to, to put to put the album out and also the new thing that i have is um i have a new record label called yadran records okay, cool. uh, yeah which is which is going to uh release like um music from uh, our region and music on on our language uh cool. like ex yugoslavia uh ex -U, uh region and it's going to be hip-hop also is going to be more electronic oriented it's going to be like electronic music with our native serbian croat bosnian language nice because i never i i i i saw a few people like you know doing really good music and then they didn't have um they didn't have label to release it because it's such a small yeah. you know yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say like uh, fan base, but I say like at this moment it's a small fan base. But because it's really good music, you know, I'm sure then when it's released, it's it's you know properly serviced that more people are gonna no, hear it, more people are gonna love it, like it. So because, that's the plan. because I, I don't think I don't think you know many 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 musicians producers from 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 our region from our you know the peninsula of, of Balkan. You know they they, they yeah. don't realize that it's actually this is a big place. You know, just try try driving from Istria yeah. to yeah. I don't know it to Romania or to Istanbul. You know, like it it's gonna take you bloody ages to get there. You know, and yeah. there's, there's a lot, lot of people living here. You know, all all in all, so you know there, there is a you know there's a good audience here. Yeah, well. and, it is. And, and, it is and, good and also audience. a lot of places to play. You know, in, in the festivals, exactly. the clubs, in the infrastructure is there. You know, exactly. it's just, just it's, it's just a question what we do with it. You know, it's kind of exactly uh, connecting. It, 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 it's exactly. Just connect. Well, like look, look at the you know look, look at the other guys. You know, like UK, Germany, France, Spain. You know, yeah. they, 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 they are successful because because they know what they have. And you know they're they're good communicators. They kind of like agree on things and make you know make things happen, which I think I think sometimes in the Balkans is an issue. You know because there's a, there's a lot of lot of kind of um, you know thinking about it and kind of you know talking about it, but that when it comes to execution, somehow somehow things need to get a little exactly. bit tight. You know so the, the, exactly. the, the things are still a little bit loose. You know they they need to kind of tighten them up and get. Exactly. That's that's why I say I, I hope it's going to be by the end of this year, but maybe next year. it's going to happen for sure. But it just takes time, and yeah, it is like people are also what I realize here is like that. Uh, unfortunately, musicians here, um, even really successful musicians, like who are like professional musicians for last. 20, 30, mm. 40 years, they don't know anything, they don't know much about legal stuff mm. and their rights and what they can do, what they can't do, what. Mm. So there's a lot of, I think, educating uh, the whole the whole region because people just don't know, yeah. you know, what. And uh, yeah, I stumbled, when, when I started the label, I stumbled like, uh, I realized that bunch of, bunch of music that uh, was like, covers of like uh you know when Think when there's songs. like a yeah like but in in, in our language okay. uh that they didn't you know they just did it without any um clearing or without anything okay. you know? so, done it. so yeah it's and they don't know they're just like you know like why should it you know like yeah, I I did a song. I was like, yeah, but you didn't write it. So what? Yeah, exactly. you know, I I wrote something else, and somebody else is going to you know, 
Yeah. So they, they they don't know they don't know how the how the music business works. You, you know, that's the main and, problem for distributors. For distributors, that, that's, yeah. the, that's the one of the main problems is that people sample stuff, you know, and they don't realize that it's going to get picked up, you know. Yeah. Because yeah. it's yeah. it's you know, I, I, I was going through you know a lot of music in in, in the last couple of weeks, just like uh, really cutting down my collection to the to the to the essential, and and some things you know didn't have the the full names. They they just had the the name of the track, maybe not name of the artist or the label, and I like to have yeah, yeah. The, the full details just in case I want to kind of you know, check out other stuff you know contact the label or whatever and uh, I've used Chazam obviously as you do you know yeah. to, to, to find out what some things were and I tell you what some things it took one second or two seconds to, to identify it you know so it's just like little tiny little snippets yeah that's yeah, it. Yeah, simple, you know, yeah it just knows it you know and even even if you try and bury the sample into the uh into yeah, the track it's, it's not know, possible I, I, these I, days I've, I've, i found some I, seriously i found some things that 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 sampled um um what's his name um al green I'll, yeah, you know, yeah, I'll agree, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. Al Green's record, and it actually yeah. it was it was a little bit pitched and it was a little bit faster as well, and it yeah. was in inside the beat. But but I, the, the the guy took eight bars, sixteen bars. He took like maybe 15, 20 seconds or yeah, something yeah. like that. And 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 I went uh, on YouTube, look at the description, and there it was. You know, it, I was like wondering, oh yeah, this this sample, it's, you know, sounds really familiar. What yeah, yeah, what yeah. is it? You know, and I kind of, you know, went to see the track, and of course, YouTube picked it up. So I think nowadays you can only get away with 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 with, with little, maybe just one beat, you know, one beat short samples. You know, that's that, that that's what you can do because if you take anything longer than a, a tiny snippet, it's like a snare drum or or uh, or something like yeah, that. Yeah. You know, you, it's going to get picked up you're done you know and, yeah, and, yeah and the distributor you know some distributors will charge you like 100 euros or something like that to take it down because they have yeah, to go, yeah, yeah. go in manually and take everything down and it's it's a pain it's a pain in the bump you know sampling now it is but also i see that you know as a as a, as a possibility for a, again for the bootlegging and i'm sure if you if you release like 200 vinyls you know for yourself and for yeah, friends different, yeah that's different you know that's that's so i again think well i hope that uh, as we say like future that part of the uh, music scene is going to be future again mm. and um, I, I had like a big argument with my friend like two weeks ago like talking like is it stealing or not stealing or something and i'm just like uh, uh i don't think you know it's it's more of a it's feeling if you like making a bunch of money, then you you know like as you said, you you can't go anymore. That's why the blockchain. That's why N NFTs are cool. Mm. But uh, I mean, I'm from Belgrade. I'm from Balkans, and uh, <laughs> I love to you know still yeah. something put it on the, just on the record and just to have like hundred copies. Yeah, and yeah. I know it's but it's so sweet yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I mean I've done some bootlegs as well so I, 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 I know the feeling and it's actually you know doing the, doing the bootleg you're actually giving props to the original artist as well you, you know you, you're kind of saying well you know your record is awesome I want to do something with it yeah and also I, I told my friend when we have an argument I told him like look uh, when you are like releasing 100 records you're losing money mm. when you're leasing, you're releasing it so Although, as long as you're like losing money, it's kind of a more love than you know you're not making money. No, <laughs> so, no, no, of course. So, of course, of course, because at the, at the end of the day, you've got to live, you know. And and uh, I, I I always say that if if you cannot uh, you know afford living out of music, you know you'll have to do something else, you know. If, even yeah, if it's exactly. you know whatever it is, you know. And 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 what 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 happens then? You first of all you get demotivated, you know, because you do, you, you 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 don't have so much energy, you don't have so much time, and you know music needs to be able to 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 support the artists, you, you know, like financially, because yeah, yeah, you know, once it once it stops doing that, you you you're you know okay. If if it's if it's your second thing and you you you're not so serious about it and if you're kind of just like a, a bit of a hobbyist or you know you play some sometimes in in, in the bar or, or club or something like that it's fine but if you're a professional producer or musician you know you 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 you, you, you need to be making you know yeah, a living 
You know, I'm, of not course. Saying, I'm not talking about Ferraris, but you need to be able to. And, and that's why these these new ways are great. You know, crowdfunding and and and, and NFTs because I think that's going to empower the artist. You know, in in the long run. Exactly um, because you know, if especially crowdfunding, you know, you when when you're like crowdfunding, then you get the you know you get the love from the fans directly, yeah. and that's this you know bond. That's the best thing you know because someone. Uh, as I said from the beginning, you know, my life mother is like, if I like it, someone else likes it. Mm. So that's someone else who likes what I'm doing, and that's that's the best thing. Yeah. And that's the best feeling, and that's the best, you know, I think that's the best way. And, uh, you know, you're making something that someone else is going to enjoy. Yeah. And, and it, as we said, it's not about money, it's, it's more about love and mm. respect and, you know, uh, money, money comes second. Yeah. Of course, you gotta live from something. Yeah, but, exactly. Um, but it, just, I, of course, it's, it's not Ferraris and and, and it's helicopters. Of it's a question of balance, isn't it? It's exactly. A of balance. It's it like, is. You know, not, not not kind of like selling out completely, but giving a bit of yourself. You know, to to to, to, exactly. to, to get something back from it and, and and to be able to do your own thing. But I, I, I yeah, I mean, and I, and I think uh, we had a really really good conversation. You know, this it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's been really, really nice. great. We um, can talk about the yeah, five hours. Uh, yeah, we, we, we can we can talk. We can <laughs> talk surely we can talk for another for another two hours for sure but you know i'm i i definitely like your music and what you do and 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 and, 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 and support you and I, I wish you all the best with your new stuff and i'm looking forward to hearing your your new material you know kind of like getting the energy from the vice versa and making some 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 new great new great stuff yeah for sure cool man thanks yeah we should do that collab, like. <laughs> no, no, for sure we will. We should. I'll, I'll, I'll send you. I'm, I'm, I've been actually, I've been actually going through uh, some, some. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you. I actually have it written down here. I've been going through some, uh, like, uh, a pia piano house. Some, you know, like. Oh, nice. Italo, Italo stuff, and here's. Italo here, stuff. Here some, yeah, Italo you stuff. Can you can't nice. see this, can you? Ah, you can't see this. Can you see? Can you see this? Ah, you can't see it. It's yeah, it's out of focus. Yeah, no, there, there, there are some, there are some like piano house uh, chord progressions. So oh, nice. I can actually make, maybe I can just play some, some piano, and send it to you, and, yeah, and I'll chop it and filter it. <laughs> exactly, destroy it, like, put it through a bit crusher, right? compress it big time. All right, thank you and uh, thank you, man. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure and have a great big day. pleasure. Yeah, <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye.